Welcome back everybody, this is Lord Raven with Lord Raven Gaming, and we're here in Elite Dangerous. We're starting on a brand new account, I just cleared the save out, just so I can start this series. Uh, this series is going to be kind of a tutorial series about Elite Dangerous, and you know, we're going to start from the very bottom here, and we're going to move all the way on up to as far as we can get. So, as you can see, we're in the stock side, Sidewinder. Um, and we're here in the new player starting area. Uh, the Pilots Federation permit lock systems. And we're going to give you kind of a tutorial on how to get started and everything. So let's go ahead and let's pop up to the surface. Um, I am using just a stock um, Xbox 360 controller for this. Normally I would have a a joystick and um, I've used my CH throttle quadrant and CH yoke, or not CH yoke, uh, CH rudder pedals. Um, I've also used the Alpha flight yoke to fly around in here. So. That was a little loud for me. Not for you guys, but for me, for sure. So, as you can see, now we're sitting up at the surface. Um, it's really easy to use the controller to move around in the free camera. I kind of prefer it. I have used just the keyboard and mouse. So when you first start out, you'll be. I think you get you can be placed in one of the starting Pilots Federation starting areas, which we'll show you on the galaxy map here real quick. Um, we're in Matet, Matet, and as you can see, that little blue symbol there at Dromi. That means that that's where our mission would take us. Um, so as you can see there, uh, system map is here. Click on that, and it'll bring you over to here. That's where our mission will take us to Moss and Dock. Um, as you're starting out now, you, only new players are allowed here in this area, uh, so you don't have to worry about being ganked. In fact, I don't even think that they sell. I, I know for a fact they do not sell friendship interdictors in the starting area, so you don't even have to worry about new players getting on and coming after you so with that stated um, starport services is everything that you're gonna need to get missions supplies buy new ships buy modules everything we'll start out with the commodities market here uh, in the commod commodities market under the buy tab you have buy sell compare filters so under the buy tab you could buy all of these things um, the get average galactic price here for hydrogen fuel is 108 credits now eh, I've had some cut luck you know using this information here we'll get into third-party tools and stuff later on and I'll teach you guys how to use that um, but for now so you can just buy this and then off to the side it shows you where how much it's being bought for in other stations so T here is is being bought for 2030 credits at this station in Lotja at Popper Keep and you'll see that little UFO looking thing um, and the other ones down below it's blue if I scroll down you see it turn that that symbols blue that means that it's a planetary um, every copy now that of Elite Dangerous comes with Horizon, so you don't have to worry about buying a new one. You're buying Horizons with your your game anymore, which that used to cost a little bit extra money to the DLC, but that's now included for free. You don't have to worry about that. Um, if it doesn't have that, that little blue symbol there, that means that it's a normal station. Like, let's see here, we can go 
like that, you know, so that's the station. Um, if we go here, uh, we can go here, and let's see, it's pop or keep, so it's going to be a planetary, so see these little blue lines? If it's just a circle around the planet, then that just means that it's a landable planet. If it has those three bars on the top, that means that there is a settlement there. So this planet here has Sagan Terminal. That's not really a station. That's... Those are more for, like, missions and stuff, and honestly, I don't really deal with that, but, you know, maybe that'll be something we get into. Uh, this one here, okay, so here, that's Pop or Keep. So this station, or this planet has a single station on it, and it being Pop or Keep, you know, that's where we could sell the tea at for a profit. Um, these are outposts. These outposts only have small and medium pads where other stations such as, uh, let's see, let's go to Dromi. Where these ones, this is a Coriolis station, that's a, that's a, uh, once again, an outpost. So see here, you can see that's a landable planet. This landable planet has no um, stations or facilities at it, where this one here would. In fact, this one here has Atkins, Aitken's Hub. Um, that's a station that you can land at, and you can buy and sell commodities, get missions, possibly buy ships, you know, all that stuff. It varies per station. Um, now let's go back to this one, and you'll see here that there's these triangle looking things underneath the outposts or around that other planet. Those are fleet carriers. Fleet carriers are player owned stations, kind of, that are mobile. They, the owner of it can change where it is. Um, that, I've never, I don't have a fleet carrier on any of my accounts, so... Uh, that's something that we can cover in the future when whatever that becomes necessary. Um, so these ones are orbiting this planet here. These ones are orbiting the star. And these ones are clearly orbiting that planet. So let's go all the way back out. Let's go back into commodities. Didn't mean to go that far. Sell. That's obviously after you buy something. So if I were to buy one unit of water and then take it to another station I'd go to the cell and I'd be able to sell it. Um, as you can see these are all grayed out but they look like the like these ones do that means it's in your hold and you can sell it. Um, the compare tab is just to compare prices of galactic average, search market, suggested markets and so on. Excuse me. Uh, Somni has been kicking in, and I've been awake all night, because I work night shifts, and normally I go to sleep at 7 and 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning, and here it is at 1 p.m., and I still have not slept, except for maybe, maybe an hour at most. So mission board, this is where you can buy, or not buy, but this is where you can pick up missions, so this one would be mine, 7 units of bauxite. Source and return is using commodities market. So we'd fly to a different station that has basic medicines and we'd bring it back here. Um, for the mining ones you can go out and buy it. Just make sure that your overall purchase price is going to be cheaper than 24,000 credits here. Um, Courier jobs, that's what I'm looking for right now. So courier jobs is just simply take information from point A to point B. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Sometimes you can get, um, sometimes you can get missions that will send enemies after you, trying to stop you from delivering said information or said, or even um, cargo that you might be carrying. To start it off with, I definitely recommend picking up courier jobs. We're going to grab that one. So this one here, 
deliver three units of coffee, deliver three units of tea. Um, encrypted data storage salvage operation. I believe that's the one that uses the uh, facilities. And that's the landable, that's, they're on landable planets, it's, but they're not stations. Um, here's another courier job, we'll pick that one up too. Uh, massacre missions here are go out and kill people. So that's your combat related missions. Uh, so this one would be we need to go out and kill four pirates of a specific faction. This faction happens to be Raven Corsairs. Um, not quite getting into combat just yet. Um, takedown is kind of like bounty hunting in a sense. Bounty hunting can also be just going out to different locations such as has has sites, hazard sites. Um, Usually there's pirates sitting around in there scanning vessels trying to take trying to attack them and take their cargo. Uh, if you have a frame ship frame shift interdictor, you can you can uh, scan ships as they're cruise going around in super cruise, and you'll see bounties up. You'll see that they're wanted, and then you can go kill them, and you'll get a bounty you'll get um, a bounty voucher for that, and you can turn those in for credits. Liberate. I've never done the liberate, but I imagine that it's just uh, search signal sources. Uh, like I said, never been, never done these, so that might be something we do together. This is uh, see that symbol there, that white symbol. It looks like a sun coming up over a planet. That means that it's on a surface of a planet. So you'd need an SRV for those. Uh, let's check our cargo. So you'll see here, this is our ranks, combat rank, co trade ranks, explorer rank, CGC, which is close quarter combat rank. You all start at 0%, harmless, penniless, aimless, and helpless. Which basically means you have no rank in anything. With these ranks, as you just go up and you hit 100%, it automatically rolls over to the next rank. You rank up and you continue on going. For the combat rank, it's you gotta kill X amount of people. I think it's X amount of people. It could be uh, based off of, I don't think it's based off of credits. But definitely killing higher ranked people. So you know, they, NPCs have the same ranking st structure for this as well. So if someone is say deadly, they're worth more than someone who say harmless. Uh, trade rank is completely credit based, so you could literally go out and you could mine a billion credits worth of stuff, turn around, sell it, and bam, you'd be elite in trade rank. At least I think it's a billion. For explorer rank, uh, that's something that we'll get into in another video. I have an account that is currently out in the black, that's what it's called out here is the black, it's just, it's just non-inhabited space. And we'll get into more of exploration and tips on exploration and when we jump over to that account, but it's, I think it's credit based, based off of how much data you turn in, so not sure on the max for that. Close quarter combat, I haven't ever, ever touched, not once. So. It's, it's kind of like a, it's combat, and it's something you queue up for and then get into a match, and then you do that that way. And like I said, I've never done it, never touched it. But let's go over here to the modules. These are all the modules in your ship. So my thrusters, you'll see that there's a number, it says thrusters, and there's a number and a letter. The number is a size, and the letter is quality. So 2E, that's what what this ship starts out with. Whenever you buy a ship, almost everything's going to be rated E. Whatever slot size it is in, in the E. Um, class D s systems are lightweight. Class C, slightly better than D. Uh, I think that they run a little hotter. Class B, 
tends to be a little cheaper than class A, but with just a slight sacrifice to some of the stats. I'll show you stats here in just a second. So we got thrusters. Tells you then the type, ENG. So they're the, their engine. It's an engine type module. Shows you how much power it takes, what the health is, and the priority. Uh, priority is something we'll get into here in a little while when we start working on combat. So here you can see we have a shield generator, it's rated 2E, a cargo hatch, which you cannot upgrade, so it's always going to save 1H. Advanced docking computer, that helps you land and dock at stations, facilities, as well as use the auto launch feature. So if you're not comfortable with docking manually yourself, definitely recommend having the advanced docking computer, or at least just a docking computer. The advanced docking computer will allow you to use the auto launch feature. Uh, pulse lasers are our weapons. These are gimbaled. I think that's why they're 1G. And you can see the that symbol there in front of the 1G. That means uh, gimbaled and it will track your target. Uh, there is fixed weapons and they deal slightly more damage. But you have to manually aim them yourself, which means they point straight ahead. And they don't move from that position at all. So you'd have to line it up and manually, but you'd have to manually line it up and fire them yourselves. Where with these ones, it just track my target as long as they're in front of me, or within the targeting range, and I just have to shoot them. Uh, life support is obviously how you stay alive. That's a system that can be upgraded. Power distributor is, you'll see over here, you'll see next to my ship there in those uh, three blue rings on the right hand side you'll see three bars with two pips underneath each that's two dots so you see here I'm going to change it over to four on system okay no I'm not can't do that while I'm docked I'll show but you can change things from system to engines to weapons that's what that means in order SYS is system, ENG is engines, WEP is weapons, and RST is reset. So, like, I use the uh, keyboard to adjust those since I'm playing on PC. Uh, super Cruise Assist here. That's for when you're in Super Cruise, which is your faster than light travel in system. I'll demonstrate how that works here in just a little bit. Planetary vehicle hangar, that's for your uh, surface reconna reconnaissance vehicle, or SRV. That's how you drive around on planets and do some missions or just explore the surface of planets. At least for now until Odyssey comes out and then you'll have the SRV as well as being able to get out on some planets if the atmospheric conditions are correct. Like not too hot, not too cold, not in a lot of radiation, so on and so forth. But that's all stuff that we'll cover when Odyssey does come out. Frame shift drive is how you go faster than light, super cruise, or jumping between systems. And we're going to get to that here in just a second. Your sensors are how you s how your computer sees other ships. Uh, can cockpit canopy. Your canopy is you know, the thing that's all around you. So there's glass in front of me. Um, sitting around this uh, the ship, or this cockpit, it can be damaged, it can be broken, and when that happens, that's where your life support kicks in. Uh, power plant is how is you like your power generator, so that provides power to your ship. If that gets damaged, well, you're dead in the water. Cargo racks, pretty simple. You know, you can carry things in there. And it says cap two. That means I can carry up to two tons of cargo. Each cargo thing that I buy, it's like if I were to come in here to start port services and let's go to mission board. And okay, so you know this one says deliver six units of coffee. Well I only have two tons available. Six units is six tons. And so that would mean that I cannot deliver all six of those at once. I'd have to come back three times, pick it up, fly back to the destination, drop it off, fly back come back here, pick up two more, fly there, so on and so forth. Uh, obviously couldn't deliver three, because I only have two. Uh, oh, there's no courier job. Pick that up. 
I don't see the two anymore. But, okay, so that's it. Data leak scanner is how you, there's certain nodes on some things like generation ships, facilities, so on and so forth, that you can use and scan for data links. And that's how you get the information out of there. Composition scanner is to see what something's made up out of that's not like mineable, but like uh, for exploration, you can find things out there that will, that you can scan using the composition scanner. And that'll be something we cover in exploration when we come around to it. Discovery scanners for exploration. So that's it for modules. Fire groups. This is how you set things. One is the one, uh, one and two, and then see like I come over here and I can set the this one to one and this one to two. So then that would be two different fire groups. Um, so if I have these both set to one, for my Xbox controller, it'd be the one trigger, be the right trigger, would fire my pulse lasers. Now this would set it up to where right trigger would fire this pulse laser, left trigger would fire this pulse laser. So if I did discovery scanner on one, and then come over here, and since I'm in a station, I can't show you that quite yet. So we'll get to that. Um, here's your ship. Uh, you can turn your lights on and off. Now I'm using a key binding on my controller to now turn them on and off. Let's see on, and then turn them off, and then over here, light, turn the lights are now on. Uh, night vision won't show up until I release uh, from the landing pad. Uh, landing gear, cargo scoop, pretty simple. Beacon is used for wings, and wings are grouping up with other players. Uh, wing beacon is basically what it means, and that allows people in your wing to see you. Uh, kind of gives them a signal source to lock, lock onto and come find you. Reboot repair is definitely important. If you have a damaged module and it starts malfunctioning, you can use that to reboot and repair it. So it shuts it down, attempts to do a repair on it, and then turn, turns it back on. Um, I've never messed with the turret weapon mode. Because uh, I never mess with tur turreted weapons. They're really not useful as they have even lower DPS than gimbaled. So, not exactly sure on what that all does. Uh, silent running is used for like smuggling. Smuggling um, cargo or smuggling passengers. Uh, so like your passengers could be wanted in a system and so you need to run silent which basically shuts you off from other people people's sensors by limiting your heat signature um, here's your flight assistant so flight assist on that if flight assist is on it will your thrusters will attempt to compensate for things like uh, when you go into turns and stuff it's very useful in combat I personally haven't mastered it yet I'm still working on it um, you can turn your auto dock and your auto launch off here, and I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. Rotational correction, I'll demonstrate that when we launch. It's like, inside the station, if rotational correction is on, it will keep us locked with the rotation of the station, because you can't see it, but the station is actually rotating. If I can get out of the station real quick with this camera. X in, there we go. Okay, we're coming out here. So if you look at the star field there, you'll see that it's rotating. Um, also, where to go? You know what? I need to be over here. Might have noticed that there's there, right there. See how Dromi is rotating around? That's because the station is rotating, producing artificial gravity. So if you turn rotational correction off, that means that the station will rotate around you even while you're inside it. Hyperspace D-throttle is very useful when you're jumping 
through hyperspace to a different system. It will set your throttle to zero, and so you won't run into the star. And Super Crisps, or Super Crisp, Super Cruise Assist, auto throttle, means that when you get lined up to your target, it will manage your throttle for you. You can go manual throttle, which means that you'd have to put it into the blue zone. Which, can't see that just now, so. I'm gonna put that onto auto. Uh, pilot preferences, you can change the interface brightness. Display clock is, you'll see up there in the top right, it says 2014, 2015 now. Um, that's mean Greenwich time, I believe. So it's not your local time, it's a set time. It's the same for everybody. So if you were playing right now, you'd see that it was 2015 for you as well. Um, orbit lines are for when they bring up line the orbit lines of planets and bodies around the star. Uh, gives you also the exclusion zones around the stars and planets. You hit the exclusion zone around a star, uh, you might be having a bad time. Hit an exclusion zone around something like a white dwarf or a pulsar or something like that, you're going to have a really bad time. Sensor scale type, I'm not really yeah, sure on, on how that works and what that does. But, uh, court crimes against me, so... I've never turned this off personally, but you know, I guess some people do, like especially when they're doing PvP stuff and maybe doing a duel. If you have report crimes against me on, and another player attacks you or another N NPC attacks you, it will uh, report it to the system authorities, and then they'll be responding depending on how far away you are from a station. Gun sight mode, I've never changed, and pre-flight checks. That's just so something that you can go through before you launch. Make sure all your controls are working properly. Um, over here is your stats for your ship. So this ship can currently jump at 7.51. Unladen, that means no cargo, no fuel. Which uh, you can't really jump if you have no fuel. But minimum fuel, you can. Ju I could jump 7.75 light years. Uh, it also shows shield health. Uh, kinetic resistance, which is... Uh, Multi-cannons, you know, things that shoot projectiles. Thermal resistance is for energy weapons, beam lasers, pulse lasers, so on and so forth. Explosive resistance is like uh, missiles and torpedoes. Armor health is your ship's overall armor, armor rating. You know, obviously the higher that these values are, the more resistance you have to things. Then it shows you the armor kinetic thermal explosive resistance, which is the same as everything else. But the caustic resistance is directly related to directly related to uh, this is a alien tech known as Thargoids. Um, they can they have a corrosive thing to them. Like if you pick up some of their if you go Thargoid hunting, you can pick up some stuff that they drop, and but it can it eats holes through your cargo bay. So if you have a higher caustic resistance, um, their weapons don't eat through your armor as quickly. Uh, well, let's go over to inventory. Under inventory, you can see that it's empty. Uh, cargo capacity is zero out of two. This is refinery, so like if you're mining and you have a refinery installed, this is where you can see what's in the hoppers for there. Uh, materials, we have none right now, but we, as you progress and you start getting stuff, you'll start gathering up materials. Those are useful for engineering, and we'll cover engineering. That's a whole nother ball of wax. It's how you make your ship better. Uh, if you engineer like your frame shift drive, you can jump farther. And stuff like that. So data, encoded data, that's uh, another thing for engineering. Uh, sometimes you're going to need both materials and data to get better engineering on your modules. Synthesis, you can synthesize all these things. You got three different grades, basic, standard, and premium, and then as you can see they take different, more materials to do the better stuff. As when you start off, you have absolutely none. 
but you can do FSD injection, which means that it'll give you a boost to your crane shift drive so you can jump a little farther. So that's especially useful in exploring when you're out in the black and say you're trying to ex explore the frontier where no one's been like before. You can inject your FSD and, and get that little extra jump that you need to get somewhere. Um, AX is your anti-Xeno, which is your aliens small caliber munition, so if you're out Thargoid hunting, you can craft uh, small caliber munitions for your multi-cannons. Uh, Guardian Plasma Charger, uh, Guardians are another type of alien race, but as far as I know, In we've not dis we've only discovered ruins of theirs, and there's Guardian Sentinels, which are basically AI robots that protect those sites. Uh, explosive munitions, you know, so on and so forth. I really haven't played much around with anything beyond FSD injection. Um, but you can synthesize limpets. Limpets can, are little... Kind of like a... They're programmable devices, like you can do collector limpets or prospector limpets. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a few other, but like collector limpets will collect items such as mining materials or just things that get blo that drop off of blown up ships. And they'll just go out and they'll collect it and bring it back to your ship. The prospecting limpets are for mining. They help with telling what's inside of an asteroid to, to so you know what you're mining. Um, AFM is a. Uh, it's used in exploration. It's. It repairs your modules. It does not repair your hull. It repairs your modules only, and you cannot repair your AFM with an A with that same AFM. You can. So like if I have a class five AFM and a class one AFM, and my class five gets damaged, I could use the class one to fix the class five, and the class five to fix the other modules. Chaff is, um, it scrambles the targeting of things like your turreted weapon, gimbaled weapon, so on and this so forth, so, you know, it's especially useful against AI, NPCs. To, uh, if you need to run. Heat sinks are for if your ship starts overheating, you can deploy those out. Life support. That's definitely useful if your canopy breaches and you need to get to a station, but you're not quite going to make it. You can refill your life support with this. Um, SRV ammo, SRV repair, SRV refuel. That's for your surface reconnaissance, reconnaissance vehicle, and that's how you uh, fix those things. Uh, cabins are for your passengers. There's different types. We'll get into passenger runs here in a See, status is your system factions, your reputation, federal, empire, and alliance are your three major factions, or your three major superpowers. And these, in order to rank up, you fill up, you do missions for the station. So, like here, for the mission board, you'll see this one is controlled by the Pilots Federation. That's what that logo means there. You can see it underneath 19 out of 21 or up in the upper right corner you can see it there um, if this was a federation controlled you'd see that symbol if it was an empire controlled you see that one or the alliance controlled you see that one now as of now only federation empire have ships that are locked behind rank see reputation and rank right now our reputation is neutral with everybody and our rank is none with the Federation and Empire. If I wanted to go out and buy a Federal Corvette right now, I could not do it. You have to be at least a Rear Admiral, I believe, to get the Corvette. And the Corvette's the highest ship that you can buy in the Federation. And that's quite a grind to get that. And that's something we'll cover here in a while as well. Uh, session log. 
shows you what you've done this session, your finance. Um, so right now we have a balance of a thousand credits. Your ship insurance says 99% right now, and rebuy cost is zero. When we leave the starting area, the rebuy cost will be higher than zero. But like right now, they're trying to just give you a sense of how to play the game without having the punishment of rebuying your ship. If your ship gets blown up outside of the starting area, you have to pay the rebuy cost and you get everything back in your ship as it was. That's modules, engineering, whole, all of it. Um, permits, so right now we, have the, we only have the Pilots Federation District permit. That means that we can go into systems that are locked behind the Pilots Federation permit. As soon as we leave the Pilots Federation District, that permit's going to get revoked, and we will no longer be able to come here. Then here's your playlist. Playlist is... Nacon Spaceway. So, these are different news articles in Galnet. Galnet is something that you can access from the home menu here. Galnet News. Um, it's not quite as big as it was before but it's coming back thankfully because it brings it's kind of how the story progresses in Elite Dangerous so let's go ahead and jump over to oh, there's, uh, drop the paper there conflict training area courier job let's take that We could pick this up and we could deliver two units of tea, but we're not going to do that just yet. So over here is your navigation panel. It shows you what's in system. Uh, this is where we're at. Um, we can lock that in as our destination. That shows what we're targeting. Uh, these are different s systems around us. So we're going to be going to Dromi, so we're going to keep that locked in. Um, that says excess mass. That means that we can't jump directly there. You can access the galaxy and system map here. Here's your transaction tab. So this shows all the tr missions and jobs that you have. Well, this will show all transactions that you have available to you. So this is one of the courier jobs. Go take deliver data to Makurji Orbital in the Orna system. Shows you how much it pays. Oh, how much time is left. So, like, if I didn't log in for a week, I'd lose this mission. And that's going to affect my uh, reputation. Uh, let's see. Passengers. So, that's passenger missions. Claims. This is where your bounty claims will come, I think. Yeah. And then fines is where, like, if you get. If you incur a fine at a station this is where it will show up as and this is where your bounties like it not your the bounties that you need to collect but the bounties that are placed on you I believe is where this will show up bounties that you need to collect will show up in claims contacts just shows you what's nearby so, um, so high energy FSD wake is someone jump into another system Low energy FSD wake is someone jumping into the system, uh, within the same system, so they're not leaving the system. And we'll get into how you can scan those later. Uh, here's a ship. And I can't select it subsystems right now. But, uh, see the different ships that are out here? Let's see if we can see some of these ships. Remember to visit every time you pass through the system. So here's Type 7 transporter. As you can see, the paint's a little worn off on that. That does happen to your ship as you're flying around. There's a Beluga. That is the biggest passenger ship you can purchase. She is massive. She flies like a whale. Size of uh, 
our ship there. That's our ship sitting down on pad 31. That's the Beluga. Pretty much the biggest ship in the game. That there is an Orca, so that's your second biggest passenger ship. Oh, oh, so they're pushing on that adder there. The adder needs to move out of the way. Well, good. Jump back into the ship, and we're already 40 minutes into this recording. Just me, just explaining crap. This is your chat window, inbox, friends. Ooh, they're gonna die. That's just your, uh, this is your recent history of who you've seen. These are actual commanders. These are, uh, so these are other people. Um, that's your squadron. And then, Target that online. Uh, here's your helm, how you can deploy your SRV. You can't do it inside the station. Your helm, fighters, you can have fighter bays. Crew, crew will fly. Fighters, and then just some help. So let's just uh, go ahead and do auto launch. You can see night vision pop on. A couple of adders there. Honestly, I think we're gonna have to turn our auto launch off because. station and then the other ones are Coriolis stations. They're going to be your large stations. They always will have large, medium, and small pads. Let's line up. You'll see on the left side right next to the radar a circle with a little white dot and I just line that dot up. That just means that I am on target for my jump and we're going to go ahead and do our super cruise jump on out of here. Here, I'll play with the pip, so there's system, engine, weapons, and reset. You can tell that when I popped it up to engines, it made me go a little faster. So here we go, doing our first hyperspace jump to the Dromi system. Dromi, Dromi, whatever it's called. We'll do a quick uh, super cruise assist show you how that works and then we're gonna probably end the video there now you see how I just stopped flying like my I'm now down at 30 kilometers a second that's as fast as you or as slow as you can go in super cruise 
wrong. If you'll notice on my radar there, there's a box flying around with a line on it, and the box is hollow. And there's other boxes there that are solid. If it's hollow, it's a player, another person. If it's solid, that means that it's an NPC. Now, if it's a hollow triangle, that means they have an FSD injector or their weapons are deployed, depending on what kind of space you are in. So if you're in Super Cruise like we are now, it would be that they means that they have their FSD interdictor on. If you're in normal space, see there's a solid box, that means that that's an NPC. Um, so let's go ahead and come around. That little white star moving along right there on the left side of the screen, that's another ship, Super Cruise. See that it's blue, that means that we have a mission there. We're gonna go Super Cruise Assist. Now it says align with target destination, and you're gonna use the same targeting rectangle that we used to light up for our hyperspace jump. And we're gonna stay away from the star. See, so I'm gonna turn on orbit line. You see that little white, that little yellow line there? Go inside of that towards the star, you'll do an emergency stop, which you don't wanna do. I mean, you doing it around the star like that is going to be bad. I mean, whatever. So as you can see, we just activated Super Cruise Assist. We're now lined up with Moss and Dog. We're now on our way there. Now, Super, I can let go of my controller and just sit back and talk. The ship's going to fly itself. And it'll drop out at Moss and Dog, and then I can line up and do the auto dock procedure. Pretty simple, pretty easy. You're gonna see their fuel level over there on the far right bottom. If you run out of fuel, your ship blows up. So if you are someplace and you run out of fuel and you can't get more fuel, it's best to log out of the game and call the fuel rats. And like, there's no reason for us to abuse it. You know, maybe we'll sign up with the fuel rats and do a go through their training and do some couple fuel rat runs at some point in the future on a account that I, of one of my accounts that I have. But as you can see we're getting kind of close to this body here and the fringe shift drive uses um, gravity. It is affected by gravity. Okay so this is a Coriolis station different than the station that we left. Now the mail saw will always face the station that you will all, the mail saw will always face the planet that you drop in at. So we'll see now that we're under seven point five kilometers out. So we're gonna go ahead and come over to here. We're gonna go to contacts and we're gonna go to press docking. It's a slow down for auto dock, so we're going to auto to zero. Auto dock in progress. You are clear for automated approach, Commander. Now, the ship is flying itself. I'm not doing this. Some people say that those that use auto dock are scrubs, but honestly, if you're comfortable using auto dock, then more power to you. It's your game. You play it how you want. Sometimes where, you know, I enjoy not using auto dock. It's especially helpful in larger ships. You know, like the Sidewinder, I could get into the mail slot and get docked up fairly quickly and easily. In fact, I'll probably turn it off on the next time that we go to another station. As you can see, it just brings us in through the mail slot. Now we're inside. And it's going to take us right on down to pad 12. You can see it says proceed to landing pad 1 2. Right above our uh, radar there. And you can see that was the. Uh, well done. To complete the mission, access starport services from the menu in the center of your dashboard. Then select the mission board from the general services list on the left of the presented screen. You'll be able to hand in your assigned mission to the Pilots Federation representative here. This will formally complete the mission. Thank you. 
So now you, I have an option of refueling. That means that any fuel that I use is now replaced. It does cost credits. So we're gonna go down into the hangar. Same way that I came out of the hangar earlier when we first started. Go start port services. Go to mission board. Now, I have two missions here. Courier job and uh, the starting mission. Welcome to the galaxy. So that gives me 10,000 credits right Commander. there. You've proven that you can travel between systems and navigate the mission board. Yep. From this point on, you'll be choosing your own missions. A variety of contracts are available throughout the galaxy that require a skilled pilot. Once again, there are training missions available to practice a variety of controls and challenges. The pilot's handbook, found in the internal interface panel, also provides a wealth of advice on most professions. I'll look forward to watching your progress, Commander. Make us proud. This is Theo Arcosta, signing off. Okay, now that he's shut up. We can turn in the courier job. This is going to give us almost 30,000 credits. Turn that in, and now we're at 40,000 credits. Now this is going to give you an overall debriefing of your mission and reputation changes. And we're just going to go back. So let's do quick outfitting. That's going to pop everything out. I personally am going to sell this, but because there are, everything in this ship is loaned, I'm not going to get any money for it, but what I'm doing is I'm reducing my overall mass. You'll see that when I sell this, I can now jump 7.83 light years minimum, currently at 8.09, and a maximum of 8.37. Come down to optional internal, we're going to get rid of the planetary vehicle because we're not going to I'm not going to need it for the rest of this um, we are going to put a 2e cargo rack on here and then we're going to put a 1e cargo rack on here so now that's going to raise us to 8 so now we can carry eight tons of weapon or of cargo. For internal, this is how you upgrade all this stuff. Uh, you see, we have a 2D frame shift drive, so I don't think we can get a bigger one in the starting area. That's fine. Uh, 2D thrusters. I don't think you can go above D rate on anything here. Um, the shipyard, real quick, before we end this. So this is the ship we're currently in, the Sidewinder. As you can see, it costs 32,000 credits. Uh, that's a, the Eagle's a pretty decent uh, combat ship. Hauler. I bet you can figure out what that one does. But I'll tell you anyway. It, uh, great for cargo running. Uh, the Adder is larger cargo hold than other ships. Uh, 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 it's larger cargo hold than most smaller ships. So, you know, like, that'd be a decent one to do some cargo run missions. Viper Mark III is uh, another pretty decent combat ship, but, you know, you can, you, you can do whatever you want with these ships. It doesn't have to be what they were designed for. Uh, the Cobra Mark III, that's a multi-purpose ship. This can do pretty much anything. The thing about multi-purpose ships is they're good at everything, but they're not great at one thing. So, it's kind of like a bigger Sidewinder. And that's going to be it for these ships available in the starting area, or at least at this station. And for now, honestly, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Next time we come back in, we'll finish off these uh, courier missions that I have. But it's get to the point where I have an appointment to meet in real life and I have to take care of that so thank you all for tuning in hope that this at least helps some new people and I'll be getting the next episode out of Elite Dangerous here real soon so I'll probably be recording it later tonight after I've slept some in the meantime this is Commander Raven signing off